you just know was going to come on here today and not sugarcoat that performance. I'm not going to slag off the players. I'm not going to be harsh. I'm not going to go that. I'm not going to be that person. The most polite way I can put that is that was pathetic. That's the most polite way I could say it. It's pathetic. The worst 90 minutes of this season. We didn't concede in the second half. That was probably the most positive thing. The most praise I can give to a player is Greaves. And he came off injured in the second half. And you know what? Another player I want to give a mention to. Major Gomez. At least he had a shot. At least he tried. At least he had an attempt. At least he tried to attack. At least he tried to make stuff happen. Coppinger did his best. Coppinger, Gomez, Greaves. Only three players that did anything in that game. Rest of them. Rest of the starting 11, shall I say. Because Lakilo did bring some energy. Horton looked like a... You know, an alright player coming on from... You know, it was his, his first league appearance. You know, he could look like a bright talent. Leave the subs out of it. So, Gomez leave out of it. Likilo leave out of it. Because he looked energetic a bit. Horton leave out of it. In the starting lineup, Greaves and Coppinger. Rest of them, don't even... They get below a 5. Greaves and Coppinger are the only players that get above a 5 today. Because that was pathetic. And that's the most polite way I could say that first goal Halliday got skinned he got skinned alive like you were being cut up by the chainsaw from that gut from that horror character Leatherface he got skinned alive by Brandon Barker well done to Brandon Barker by the way Rangers Loney brilliant performance one of the star men for Oxford in fact the whole flaming Oxford team I'll give them all credit well done Oxford you got revenge on us for that 3-2 win at the keep that we got you got revenge on us, big time. Second goal, free kick, headed in, 2-0. After the first goal, our heads just collapsed. We fell apart. Third goal, how did he even get the space to shoot? To get the pass through to Shadipo, and how did he get the space to shoot? Poor defending, weak, spineless mentality. That's what it was like on the pitch. And I know these players are brilliant players on their day. But today was their worst 90 minutes of the season. And like I said, I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to go all in and slag off the players. Because that's not me. That's not my kind of personality. I'm not going to slag off the players. But I'm allowed to be critical and analyse what I see. And what I see is a pathetic performance. Our mentality is weak. Our mentality was spineless. We had... No creativity, no urgency, no pace. And we started off well. Before the first goal, we started off well. We were getting in there, getting chances. As soon as we scored the first goal, we fell apart. Big time. It was always going to be hard for Butler to get the magic out of that squad. Because bearing in mind, he has inhabited a Darren Moore squad. But you've now got Rovers fans on social media. Non-stop messages from Rovers fans going, you know... We need a proper manager in now next season. We it, People are saying now. People are saying now we bring in a new manager. And I spoke with Ian Danter from TalkSport weeks ago. And I said, and we both said, you know what? It's a continuity appointment. It's the best way forward. But you've got people online saying we need a new manager now. Is Daniel Stendhal free? Can we give someone else a call? And I feel sorry for Andy Butler. I really do feel sorry for him. But today, the, the players didn't turn up. And you know what? And that's the, th that's, that's the best way to sum up this performance. Today wasn't a manager problem. It was a player problem. Players didn't look like they didn't want to play. Players couldn't be bothered. I'm looking at two players in particular today. And I hope they watch this. And I hope they understand and improve on this. Because, it, because I want to be critical. And I want to say that these players didn't look bothered today. Especially. Elliot Samoes, Taylor Richards. From what I saw from the game, those two players in particular, at times in that game, didn't even look bothered to play. They, it looked like they couldn't be bothered to play the game. They couldn't bother to play for the club. And that's not our mentality. That's not our philosophy. Our philosophy as a football club is you play for the badge on the shirt, game in and game out. If you don't have that mentality, then go. Richards and Samoes, I know they've got that mentality in them. 
but they didn't show it today. Today must have been an off day for them because today they didn't they didn't look like they were bothered to play for the shirt today. But I know they can. I know they can play for the badge on the shirt. Today was just an off day for them in terms of playing for the pride of the Rovers shirt. Um, no attacking, no attacking edge. You know, we have more attacking edge off the the side of a protractor. You know, that's the most edge we've got off the side of a protractor. Unbelievable performance in the worst way. And I really hope we fix up because look who we've got next on Saturday. Gillingham. The side who today has just battered Lincoln 3-0. I don't know if it's more than that, but I think they ended 3-0 to Gillingham. Mate, if we don't fix up before Saturday, we can end up falling out the top six and our season could be over before we hit April. We need to fix up. We need to, Butler needs to show his ruthless side now as a manager. This is where he, this is his first big uh, obstacle as a manager. You're, you're faced with a team that's low on confidence, can't attack. We can't attack a bull in the china shop. You've got a team that's low on mentality, low on confidence on the pitch. Your first task and your first um, assignment as a manager is to get those players up Grab them by the neck, grab them by the downstairs area, get them back into training, get them back fighting for their place. Because if I was that manager, for the next game on Saturday, I don't care about injuries. Because right now, with Greaves added to the list, with Reese James on the list, we've got an injury list almost as long as the amount of wins that Arsenal have had this season so far. And for and trust me, that's embarrassing, in in my opinion. That's embarrassing. And, you know, there's fans that will use the excuse of, oh, we, we didn't have any, any first-teamers on the pitch. We still had first-teamers on the pitch. We still had to, it, you know, we can't use injuries as an excuse. But this is where Butler's now going to grab the team by the scruff of the neck, go on Saturday and put in a performance. Because that didn't feel like a Rovers performance. That felt like, it felt like a pointless embarrassment today. Um... And like I said, the team's got to fix up big time on Saturday. Big time. Um, and of course, you know, the preview for the Gillingham game will be out on Friday. And of course, the review on Saturday afternoon. But let's get into these player ratings. Um, starting with the subs bench. Um, Ed Williams. I'm going to give him a five. You know, not too much, but not a lot. Um, Brandon Haunton, six. Looked lively-ish, putting a tackle a few times, putting blocks, etc. But again, nothing much. Magic Gomez, six. I think again he's one of the top substitutes from this game because at least he tried to have an attempt on shot. At least he tried to show stuff. You know, fair play to Magic Gomez. Maybe he was watching the last review that I did, uh, where I said he needed to uh, show more attacking depth and he needed to improve on his game. Maybe, he w maybe he watched my review from from the previous game because he looked like a better player today when he came off the bench and you know what after Richard's performance I think Smith's on international duty next week with Richard's performing so poorly today and with Samoa's performing so poorly with Grease injured I want to see Gomez start on Saturday and I know that's rare for me to say I know but after that performance off the bench, I want to see Magic Gomez starting as a cam in that position on Saturday against Gillingham. Press like he did in that second half, attack like he did in that second half, and you could get a nice couple of goals. You could do it, Magic Gomez. I know you can. You've picked up this form now. I know you can do it, mate. I know you can. But he was probably the best player off the pitch out of the starting eleven uh, today, and it just proved how bad we were in the starting eleven. Um, uh, uh, Lakilo. Uh, finally, obviously I spoke about Williams, Horton and Gomez. Lakilo, I'm going to give him a six as well. Looked lively at times and tried to do something a couple of times. But apart from that, I, I think, again, Lakilo should start, in my opinion. I don't know why he wasn't starting today. But, um, yeah, there we go. Now let's move into the big one. the uh, Not the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The big one. The starting 11 ratings. Lewis Jones, three. And that's being generous. Three. Um... At least one or two of the goals should have done better. Um, I think that there's a couple of occasions as well, especially in the first half, where there was some communication issues between him and Joe Wright and things like that. And just 
if Lewis Jones is going to be number one next season, he's got to keep that out of his game. And t- I'll tell you something now. After that performance, a few Rovers fans are going to be looking at this and saying, "Yeah, we're not going to get, we're, we're not going up for another two, three years because we're going to need to, if Butler's going to become permanent manager next season, we're going to need to start building. And it's going to take a couple of years. So, you know, the Butler era might be a long one, but you know, some Rovers fans will ride it out. Some will, some will give up and say enough's enough. But we need to ride it out. If Butler's going to be manager next season, we have to ride it out and just go through the process and just go through it. But if we don't see any progress in the in in the process in a couple of years' time, we'll start asking questions about what was the process in the first place. But it is a Butler era. It is a process. We just have to ride it out in the next couple of years. We've just got to go through it and see what happens. Um, but yeah, Lewis Jones, if he's going to be number one next season, he's got to cut, he's got to cut out those communication mistakes. He's got to cut out a couple of mistakes from the goals. I give him a free, and that's been three, and that's been generous. But on a personal level, Lewis, I know you're a great player, mate. I know you can do better than that. I know you can have a better game. You did pull off some good saves in that game as well. But in my opinion, I know you can do better. And thanks for the lovely personal messages. Uh, it really means a lot, Lewis. Um, Brad Halliday four, like I said, got skinned alive, like being cut up by Leatherface's chainsaw on the first goal. Um, you know, he got he got skinned alive, and he was he, he kept it was like it was him versus McGeady all over again at Sunderland, wasn't it? Instead of McGeady, it was Barker, and then when he came off, I think it was Elliot Lee, um, and just Halliday had a very quiet game, just just got out skinned nearly every time, four, and that's one of his lowest ratings of the season. Um, Joe Wright five, just communication errors again in the first half, couldn't defend couldn't defend a mattress from a hedgehog. And that was his performance in the first half. Second half, gradually better, but that's because Oxford was still firing shots and didn't score. But I know Joe Wright can be a better player than that. But 5 out of 10 is generous. Same with Captain Anderson. 5, again, same story. Uh, Was slightly better than Anderson, but no one gets below a 5 apart from a couple of players. Um, Danny Amos, 4. I mean, I know people are excited to see Danny Amos back, but to be perfectly honest, in in the long term, you've got to think. He's been injured for a few months. He had been playing for a few months. He was on commentary for a few months. There was, there was. You, you can't just throw him straight in there unless he's not 100. percent That's the first rule in managing. Don't throw someone out there that's not 100 percent straight into a very important game where you need three points, because you know Danny Amos will be back on the bench on, on Saturday. And you know what? I, again, I can't believe I'm saying this. If Rhys James is out, Horton. I keep him on the bench. I would not risk him starting. I would put Amos on the bench with Horton, and I'd start Cameron John. You know what? I thought he was. I thought he looked the better over the last week or so. I think he looked the better of the left backs. Reese James obviously playing on the wing, but he's injured now. So the next best is Cameron John, and I know some people will be unhappy about that. But you know what? I'd start Cameron John a month of Sundays after his performance in that. Um, draw against Northampton I thought it looked, actually looked a good player so I'd start Cameron John on Saturday and I know people might be unhappy about that but if, if that comes back to bite me on the backside, then I'll hold my hands up and say it wasn't good enough but I'd start Cameron John on Saturday I'd risk it uh, but Danny Amos 4 and I hope he gets back to full fitness at some point um, Matt Smith going into midfield 5 and I think he was one of the better players out there but still gets a 5 um, he was losing the ball quite a lot in the second half um, first half was better in my opinion from him but second half just lost the ball a few times just okay average performance in my opinion AJ Grease 6 he was probably one of the only bright sparks from that game he was probably our best in fact no not probably he was our best player for the first teamers that's embarrassing but for AJ Greaves, that's amazing comment down below if you think AJ Greaves was man of the match because I think so he was putting in tackles he was looking fierce he was looking physical Again, one of the only bright spots from the game. And I've said this about Greaves. He is like the Angolo Conte of this team. He's an annoying pest in the midfield that opponents just hate to play against because he'll annoy you on the pitch. He'll put tackles in. He won't be afraid to stick one in the boot. He won't be afraid to do that. And he's injured now as well. He's on the injury list. Our inju- like I said, our injury list is as long as... Um, Arsenal's winning wins this season in the Premier League which is embarrassing for Arsenal but um, yeah Greaves looked a bright spot and now he's injured so what, what we're going to do is Robertson going to be back on Saturday I hope so Bogle and Bostock are hopefully back on Saturday so maybe that will reassure things 
Uh, but again, it's Gillingham. They beat Oxford th- uh, Lincoln, sorry, three 0 I wish it were Oxford. I wish we could beat Lincoln again. But yeah, they beat Gill- uh, they beat Lincoln three 0 today. Gillingham look a good side going into this game on Saturday. Um, going into the the wings, Coppinger on the right f- six. Again, one of the better players. Um, tried to make stuff happen. You could see he was a leader on the pitch. Um, I, I, I feel sorry for him at times. He did give the ball away a couple of times, and you know there was a couple of shots that went haywire. But you know what? Uh, I know he can do better than that. But I think again, he was one of the better players on the pitch. Uh, Taylor Rich is five, and like I said, and I know that I know this guy's got got talent because we've seen it this season under da- under Darren Moore, coincidentally. Um, but Taylor Richards, I'm sorry, but at times in that game, he did not look like he could be bothered to play the game today. He looked like he didn't want to be there. He looked like he couldn't be bothered to play football today. And I know he can do better than that. And it's a shame. It's a real, real, real shame. Because I know he can do better than that. Um, Samoas, four. Four. Looks good at the start, but gradually... Again, I mentioned this last week. He's got the technical ability of a cross-eyed shark trying to walk on dry land. And at the minute, it's like he couldn't even cross the street without looking both ways first. It's just another poor performance from Samoas. And again, like I said, I'm sorry for Samoas, but he looked like he didn't want to be there. He looked like he didn't want to play in that game again today. And, you know, I've I've got no doubt Samoas can be a good player. He could be a wonderful player for this club. I know he's got talent. Today, he just didn't turn up, like Taylor Richards. So, again, I'll give him a four because he looked gradu- gradually worse than Richards. And for Jiro Kanabiri, five. Had the attacking intent of a slow-moving bus. And it just didn't have that attacking intent that we expect of him. He's not on form at the minute. Looking at the bigger picture, he's not on form at the minute. Um, so, yeah, just overall, just not a great performance from him either. I've got the note. I've got all the notes from the goals. Halliday beating down the flank for the first one. Free kick, touched on for the second goal. Shadipo finishing well, um, and it was it was actually Matt Smith dithering in possession for that goal. That was the bad thing about it. And then, no one defending it. We go into that half absolutely deflated, and it's like Ox. I know Oxford had loads of shots in the second half, but it's like oh, we don't need to score anymore. And then gradually, as the half went on in the second half, they took off all their sort of first teamers from the game that put in the all-star performances, and they gradually put all their substitutes on and thought, you know what, we don't need to worry about them now. Let's just rest the rest of our talent. We didn't play like a top six side today. We played like we were relegated. I think that's the way to sum up the performance today. We played like we were already relegated from the, from League One. We felt like we were going down to League Two next season, playing like that. That was off. That was pathetic. I'll say it again. It was pathetic, and that's the nicest way to put it. It was pathetic. Um, so what do we need to do against Gillingham? Well, well, there's a host of things we need to do. I think there's a host of things the manager needs to do. Um, he needs to be ruthless. He needs to go in there, and, and you know, you know, Andy Butler. You saw that nil-nil draw result. He didn't sugarcoat that at all. So I know he's going to come out firing tonight. If he doesn't come out firing him in the press conference and say that was an awful performance, that was a pathetic performance, every one of those lads should be hanging their heads in shame, then, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And, you know, to address the fans that are posting online, oh, Butler's not a manager, let's get a brand new manager in now, why are we hanging on to it to the end of the season, getting another manager, Ch- honestly, guys, don't say things like that. Because, yes, today's performance was poor by anyone's standards. And I think even the club themselves can admit today was poor. Today was pathetic. But if you're, if after one, after one massive loss, probably the worst 90 minutes of the season so far, right up there with the likes of Sunderland 4-1 to, uh, this season. If you're saying you want the manager out after, that, after the last couple of results, what's the point? What's the point? Because we're going to have him to the end of the season at least. And maybe next season as well. And you know what? Some Rovers fans were speaking about this on Twitter with me um, during this during the second half. It was a ca- It's a case of now, it looks like we are building a squad of permanent players for League One. It looks like, you know what? We were in a comfortable position. We went on a bad run. More went. We have to see out the rest. Of the, I think the goal this this season now is just to see out the rest of this season as best we can. Where we finish, we finish, and then next season we go on and we try and push again with a with a proper Andy Butler squad. 
no loanees, right? Not we're not going to be tagged as Lone Caster Rovers anymore. We're not having that tag on our club because I hate that tag. I hate that we're being nicknamed Lone Caster Rovers by deluded fans from other clubs who think their clubs buy in Munich. I'm not having that. I hate that tag. I really hate that tag because it's disrespectful to the fans. It's disrespectful to the players, the manager, the staff. And it's beyond anything else. Lone Caster Rovers is disrespectful to the club. The club that's been here for over 150, 150 years. That survived through the world wars. That survived through many different disasters. That survived through um, relegations, promotions, a stand getting burnt down through pitch invasions, through funerals. To see that kind of tag, Lone, Ca Lone Caster Rovers. What are we now, a banter club? Behave yourself. Lone Caster Rovers is the most disrespectful tag you could give to our club. But you know what, it could fire us up. And it could prove like, you know what, no, we're not that tag anymore. We are Doncaster Rovers. We are a club that's going to fight. We're a club that's going to compete. We're a club that's going to go on a massive journey now under Andy Butler, starting from the rest of this season right through into next season, and we're going to prove that we are no mugs in this division. We're not going to see that anymore. That performance, I'm hoping and praying, will fire a lot of those players up. And a lot of those players will be sat in the dressing room, and I bet themselves they will be sitting and having a long, hard look at themselves after that performance. And look at their performances and think, right, back to the drawing board, how can I improve? And that's the nicest way I can put it. I don't want I don't want my club to be disrespected by rival fans anymore. I want us to compete. I want us to be a I want us to be able to compete regularly, season after season, no matter whether we're in the championship, league one, you know, and right up there in the premiership. I don't care what division we are in. We need to compete year after year to be in the top six. Mi minimum, minimum title, maximum top four. That's what I want this club to be. Competing at the top. Competing at the very top levels. And we need players that are going to play for the club. And I know these players can play for the club. Today, they didn't show it. And on Gillingham on Saturday, we need to prove that to the world again. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this match review. Oxford 3. Donny nil. I expect a better performance on Saturday against Gillingham. A Gillingham side are going to be fired up after beating Lincoln 3 0. The scoreline that we got beat by by Oxford tonight. And let's go in there with a bit of pride, bit of passion for the shirt, bit of bottle, bit of nuts about us. Let's go and get the three points. Because trust me, I do not want to see another display like that again. You know, people can be disrespectful on social media. You know, they can, they can cross the line, slide the players off. Don't do that. Please don't do that because it just puts more disrespect on the club. The more you disrespect players and slag them off in a very, very harsh way, the more disrespect comes to the club. So don't slag off the players. Please don't slag them. You can criticise them, be critically, anal critically analyse their performances, but don't slag them off. Do not slag them off. That's what I've done tonight. I've, crit I've critically analysed their performances and, s and be brutally harsh, but I'm not slagging off the players because I know they're good players. I know they're wonderful players on their day. So I know they can do it. It's just getting the best out of them. Thank you very much, guys. My name is Aaron Chandler from Forever Football, DRFC, Keep Living the Rovers Life, and that, my friends, is full time. Rovers till I die. Let's get the win on Saturday. Please, Rovers, please do not let me down. Rovers, no!